I know is so explosive and so... Good morning, beautiful people of the internet. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News, and we are doing the Climate Viewer 3D Daily Report. Today is July 10th, 2014, and we have more storm damage moving out of the U.S., the uh, upper northeast, and uh, luckily we didn't have any storm uh, tornadoes today like we did yesterday. Um, and we're going to come back over here. We have significant flood uh, warnings up and down the Mississippi. Uh, they're right about, they're forecasted 23.4 feet. Um, in fact, we can come over here and you can click U.S. River Flood Stages. And you will see the red circles are very high. As you can see, it says uh, major flood stage at 20.5 feet. It's 18 feet already. Yeah, they got a lot of flooding coming up down the Mississippi. You guys watch out. Let's turn that off. And then over here um, in Nebraska, green H's are for hail. Blue W's are for wind damage. And you can see that as well. So they um getting some gusts across uh, Nebraska. So this is our... Uh, Google cloud map and if you just drag it like this you can actually see it animate over time pretty cool stuff these are the same tools that the NASA nor, uh, National Weather Service they all use um, all of this data is pulled live from those sources and you can come check it out every day pretty neat stuff beautiful so um, all of these rain icons that you're seeing on the screen these are actually cloud seeding projects. Now, many people know about weather modification. Most don't. Um, weather modification in the form of cloud seeding is when you take a plane or a ground-based emitter, you burn some chemicals, and you release them into the atmosphere. These chemicals are cloud condensation nuclei, or CCN, or ultrafine CNs. And these particles attract water, which should form raindrops and fall in the form of pre precipitation. Now, that's not the only purpose for weather modification using cloud seeding. There's also hail mitigation. Um, as you can see, there's snowpack augmentation. That's another category. Um, Snowpack augmentation along the Rocky Mountains, what they'll do is they have ground-based emitters on the west side of the mountain. They burn silver iodide from uh, towers at the base of the mountains that flows up into the sky and forms snow on top of the Rocky Mountains, which melts and provides water for most of the west coast. Um, this has been all artificially generated for the past 30 years. Um, it, our, and we can see that the problem is still exacerbated as you know these are still areas of drought constant drought um, we currently don't have the water for the demands uh, placed on the system and we've been altering it for at least 30 years uh, cloud seeding started in 1946 it was heavily employed in the 80s and Ford um, the US Department of uh, Agriculture and the U.S. Bureau of Land Reclamation do uh, national-based cloud seeding programs. The state of California, Nevada, um, Colorado, Utah. Um, most of these states, Texas is a very large one, they will use uh, artificial rainfall to fill up their reservoirs behind their dams. Um, they got to keep those things topped off. Lots of money involved your weather is modified on a daily basis and you can come through and click on any one of these and see them for yourself now I have these up they're from the pollution category here at the bottom of the pollution category you can see weather modification there's geoengineering projects this is provided by the etc group uh, Jim Thomas at the etc group sent me an Excel file which I turned into a fusion table which you can see here and I converted that over to the Google Earth map. And this will go through and tell you where the geoengineering projects around the world have currently um, you know, been documented. But 
what we're what we're really concerned about is there's so much going on that is unknown and that's what the et cetera group's doing here we're trying to find out exactly what's going on in our skies who all it, who are actually involved in controlling our skies currently if you look at what's going on with nasa um with all of the government agencies uh obama passed a uh, climate change executive order yesterday um we are pushing very quickly towards global control of our environment through something called solar radiation management um bill gates has a a fund called Pfizer, f-i-c-e-r which he is uh has ken caldera and david keith uh controlling the money in that fund to do studies on solar radiation management now this is a process of mimicking volcanoes natural cooling process they go and spray a bunch of sulfates or aluminum uh, nanoparticles high into the stratosphere and this will reflect sunlight to cool the planet now that is a scary proposition and it is their solution for dealing with the co2 global warming problem um, obviously there's going to be many ramifications for that uh, changes in precipitation patterns um, all kinds of stuff they have so many unknowns it is unbelievable yet they push forward now history will tell us that this is not new um, Mr. Jim Fleming, who is my personal hero, I really hope to meet him one day. Um, I've learned a lot from him. He has many great articles, books, speeches, um, presentations. This is a, a great short one, and uh, I suggest you watch it. But what he makes the case is that there have been three cycles of weather modification that have occurred, and you know. Each time history repeats itself. Um, in the early days of pluviculture, during the early 1900s, rain men would come into town and make all these promises, never deliver, and be run out of town with shotguns, you know, and they get their little bag of money and they're running out of town. Um, a very famous one is in San Diego. There was a gentleman named uh, Charles Mallory Hatfield, he was an American Indian. Uh, San Diego paid him said they would pay him ten thousand dollars to make it rain he did in fact it caused a billion dollars worth of flood damage and as a result the city of San Diego refused to pay Mr. Hatfield because if they paid him for his services then they would be admitting liability for the damage caused by his cloud seeding activities now this is a recurring theme we have people controlling our skies and we really have no accountability or transparency the, the only accountability we have in America is that you're required by public law 92205 15 CFR part 908 to report any weather modification activities to the NOAA um, corporate services website and you can see them here and it's corporate services .noaa slash NOAA forms slash e forms slash NF 17 dash forward F dot PDF I've got a picture of both of those here and you can go over to the actual site and see the, the forms that you fill out but once you fill these forms out uh, pretty much you're that's it you you notify them and you're supposed to you know tell Noah if anything happens afterwards you know give like a little report card on it but these are the cloud seeding projects we just saw in um, climate viewer 3d they're also in a flat map right here along with some uh, NCAR EOL uh, field labs NCAR is the number one university in America for weather modification. It's in uh, Boulder, Colorado, and it's also UCAR. And most, I think the last time I heard to quote, 96% of the funding for weather modification research in America comes from Israel. Just a heads up. So right here you have all of the articles I've written over time. These are on geoengineering projects. This is a list of weather modification companies that's just their names their websites and they're real patents the history of cloud seeding hurricane hacking this is on how bill gates and his crew are using the geoengineering devices that they're creating to steer hurricanes and how the department of homeland security is involved in that as a result of katrina 
So Katrina happened. It became a national security concern to uh, deal with hurricanes once again. Uh, DHS went to NOAA and said, please help us. NOAA said, no, we will not help you. Because, and then they cited Project Cirrus, po Project Storm Fury as a result of why you should not mess with hurricanes, yet they press on. So the, the theme here is the new kids on the block, the geoengineering, we're going to control the entire planet's weather. They're coming in saying, let's do big, let's do real big. And the cloud seeding weather modification guys, they're saying, hey, man, we've been doing this for 60 years and the National Academy of Science still has not, you know, agreed that it, there's real science behind cloud seeding behind cloud seeding you guys want to push ahead and do SRM and these big things and move hurricanes not advisable so then we have electric rain making this is ionizers um, cloud shifting weather resonance technology this is about as sci-fi as it gets it's very controversial but nonetheless companies are making claims that they can control clouds through electricity the blue gold rush Fresh water has been dubbed blue gold in many publications as potable water will be to this century what oil was to the last century. Less than 3% of the water on Earth's surface is fresh water. The blue gold rush is a very big concern. Look at your fracking. Look at uh, all of the different sources of groundwater pollution and realize that water is precious and we're running out of it. And I think it's pretty evident with all the expensive water bottles we're seeing lately. Engineering tornadoes, um, using tornadoes to create electricity. Believe it or not, also creating tornadoes to blow stuff up, but we won't get into that today. Military weather warfare, um, the owning the weather paper in 1995 was followed up by a 1996 and 97 um, series of talks. This one is by Dr. Barnes, and he's at the... Uh, U.S. Army, uh, let me get this straight, Test Technology Symposium in 1997. So it's a U.S. Air Force guy talking at a U.S. Army installation about controlling the weather. He talks about using carbon black and contrails to control the weather in there. Good stuff. Geoengineering Roots, this is Dr. Lowell Wood, um, father of the H-bomb, good friends with Ken Caldera. He is the late Lowell Wood, I might add, so let's be respectful. Um, he is the current uh, force behind the new move for this geoengineering SRM. It came out of Lawrence Livermore Labs. There were three papers issued by Lowood, uh, Teller, Wood, and Hyde. So there you go. Um, this is the Asilomar Conference. Check it out. This is a climate scientist getting together saying, hope that the world doesn't hate us for what we're about to do. Angels play this harp. This is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds using harp to compress atmospheric methane into diamonds to reflect solar radiation so this is geoengineering SRM proposed by um, Mr. Lightfoot uh, turning methane in the sky into diamonds to reflect sunlight finally we have the chemtrail debate this is about uh, you know all of the arguments over semantics in the world of atmospheric modification and climate change as a result of aviation pollution and contrails followed up with a timeline on that which with many references if you want into the biofuel uh, climate change debate over chemtrails or if you're just curious check it out and these are my two babies there's two timelines here there's about <laughs> six months worth of stuff in there if you want to dip in so why don't we right here I have it embedded but we'll click over to it you can see all of the history of weather modification dry henceforth the Ohio rain wizard all the way up till today when we get into crazy things like the silver lining project these are uh, Stephen Salter um, John Latham and uh, funded by Leeds University and a couple others they're making boats to spray salt water into the sky to make clouds wider to reflect uh, sunlight so that would be cloud albedo modification or marine cloud brightening it's another form of SRM so yeah please check this out um, especially this the double catastrophe good stuff um, 
lots of information in these in the timelines and it's all very well referenced you can see the references underneath each one multiple multiple references to this stuff um, harp creates fire in the sky so this is your climate viewer 3d report for today i'm sure i'm always going to go longer than i expect um, but it's all for you guys and with that unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot nothing is going to get better it's not